Good afternoon and welcome to Cooking with Grace. I'm your host, Diane Duncan, and with me today is Miss Debbie Lyons. Debbie, thank you for coming. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. We are, as you can see, doing something a little bit out of the ordinary. Usually, we try to keep our Cooking with Grace show um, ingredients to like three or four ingredients. Um, today, we are making a bread that you can serve at your Mother's Day tea. Grace is going to be having a virtual Mother's Day tea party online May 9th at one o'clock. So be sure to join us, mark your calendars, invite your mothers, your sisters, your daughters, um, have them uh, join online with us. It'll be a Facebook Live event. And um, if you want to go ahead and prepare this cake or bread, it's called a bread, but it's a really sweet bread. So um, just be aware. You can have it ready for your tea when we go to have our tea parties. So we're gonna get, give you a little heads up, but I have to have a list, because like I said, it's more than just three or four ingredients. So we have two cups of all-purpose flour. We will need one tablespoon of, yes, and this is all measured, so go ahead. Um, we will need one tablespoon of baking powder Never had anybody read the instructions to me before. <laughs> this is kind of cool. Hopefully it'll be a little easier. <laughs> then we'll need a half a teaspoon, which is that end, of salt. Salt. All right. And then you will need a half a cup of sugar. Which I got that a little messy, so I'm going to get a paper towel. Okay. And I'm going to bring them back over because I forgot our little paper towel holders out of paper towels over there, Miss Debbie. Oh. So, um, and then you need one egg, but it needs to be at room temperature. So I got it out this morning and I've let it sit and it's pretty much room temperature, yeah, I think. Is. And then just go ahead and put the shell in that and throw it away later. Okay. Um, oops, and I've already made a mistake. So we weren't supposed to add the egg yet. <laughs> So that's, well. that's how I do things. So I'm going to try and scoop it out a little bit. Okay, so, well, the rats, I jumped no, the gun. No, I, I told you what to do. So we're just going to go ahead and mix that yeah. like that, and we'll see what happens. So you're supposed to mix all your dry ingredients together. We all know I'm not Julia Child, so <laughs> we're, we're, we're just winging this. Um, and then you mix your wet ingredients separately. So we're going to take our milk, our one cup of milk, our egg, our two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and a third a cup of either plain Greek yogurt or sour cream. And I've chosen sour cream because I don't keep plain Greek yogurt yeah. in my house very often. So I'll go ahead and start mixing the milk, which, yeah. Um, you got the cup. Yeah, I, I have a third a cup in front of me, so I'll just do it three okay. times. All right. Because I try to bring my stuff from home. So, whoops. Okay, and um, I need two teaspoons of vanilla extract, exactly. That'll be what I need if you wanna do that. And then I'll go ahead and do my third a cup of Greek yogurt. Minus the Greek yogurt. Yeah, except <laughs> it's sour cream. So, which I'm sure it'll work just as well. Yep. So, and, and I am a huge sour cream fan, so. It'll be perfect. Yeah, so anyway, I call that good. Yeah. And we'll just kind of scrape it out to make sure we got all the good stuff. And I'll just kind of mix this all around. Now, you'll want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. And we'll want to stir all this together. So you see what it kind of looks like there. It's, Still, the sour cream's kind of chunky, but I don't think that that's a problem because um, you're just supposed to mix it to where it um, combines, just until combined, okay? So, while Debbie is gonna add, nope, we add the flour to the wet ingredients. Oh, okay. Glad um, you stopped me. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Um, what was I wanting to do next? Oh, I need to prepare my pans. I did not. 
Now you can use a regular pan, which I have done uh, because I did test this one out. But I love this spray, this like pan cooking spray, but oh, it's yeah. got flour in it. I love it. So it really helps keeping your um, bread and your cakes from sticking. So um, I'm gonna do these pans up and uh, we'll pour this in in just a minute. But you should prep your pans and make sure that your oven is on at 350. And then once she gets that to just combine. Okay, it we'll, looks good. It does look good. You wanna kinda show everybody? There you go, that's what ours looks like. So you wanna kind of evenly distribute it into these bread pans. The and I'll start putting some of this away. Okay. So. And Miss Debbie and I both have said that we are not Betty Crocker. So <laughs> this has been an adventure. Um, I told my mom, you'll love this. So my mom was a home ec major back in the old days. That was what I think kids call FCCLA today. Um, you know, you, you learn how to yeah. cook, you, but you learned how to sew, and uh, you learned just a whole, a whole bunch of homemaker type things. Well, she majored in a home ec in college, and so when she had children and everything, um, she just thought it was awesome. She had had a daughter, because she was going to teach her how to cook and how to sew, and, <laughs> and then she had me. And, yeah. So y'all know what I cook like, right? And it is not my mother's fault. She tried. <laughs> but I went to my mom one day when she was really wanting to teach me how to cook, and I said, Mom... If I can read a recipe, I can cook. There you go. And you can, kind of. <laughs> but you also kind of do the mistakes that I do. So if my mom were here, she would just be kind of like, oh, keep trying. Because <laughs> I have a really nice mom. But um, yeah. Anyway, so our little bread pans, um, Debbie filled them up about halfway, which is great. So what you need to do next is you need to have um, uh, two tablespoons of melted butter which we've already melted our butter. Mm -hmm. You wanna show the camera? Oh, yep. There you go. And then we'll need two teaspoons, which um, we'll use this one, because this one's dry. Okay. right. And you'll need to put cinnamon in there. In the butter? In the okay. butter. Because this is our swirl, and this is what oh, makes it even more fun. The best. Oh yeah. And I have measured out here um, a third a cup of sugar, and then I'll pour that in, and I'll let Debbie start mixing together because this will be fun as well. I have to tell you, I watched the Children's Baking Network yeah. <laughs> Spring Edition, and those kids can really bake, so I've learned a lot from them. That's excellent. <laughs> and okay. Some things I'm not sure about, but they are really good about it. Well, they're so creative. Yes, they, and they know the recipes oh. by heart. And yeah. another thing, have you ever <laughs> noticed they'll be like, oh, so, you know, they'll spring in surprise ingredients on these yes. kids. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, oh, well, cardamom pairs really well with. <laughs> and they put it in. So, and I'm like, how do you know that? If I tasted cardamom, I'd be like, okay, it's a seasoning. I mean, I wouldn't know no. this goes great with chocolate or this goes great with orange or, you know, these kids know this stuff. And I'm like, wow, that is a true true talent and I looked up I looked up cardamom to see what it tasted like I wanted to go buy some to try it in a cookie recipe uh -huh. and it's like a major major expensive thing really? spices yes oh, okay yes so I, I have not tried it yet okay <laughs> so when you um, get that mixed pretty good drop it by the spoonfuls okay. around on the different breads and then um, I'll show you the fun thing that your kids could help you with um, on this on on the next thing oh yeah so I'll trade spots with Debbie and I'll go ahead and just get started so you take a knife and you don't stir it in there but you swirl it so I'm like taking this um, cinnamon mixture and just kind of swirling it in through the bread now granted there's some still that's gonna stay on top and that's okay um, but we just want to kind of get it in there so that um, it kind of gets throughout, so you'll have some cinnamon sugary tasting throughout the whole thing. Go ahead, I'll let you do that. Yeah, that's the yummy part, the cinnamon swirl. Oh, there's more yummy, Miss Debbie. Oh, oh. Oh, yes. This is probably a high sugar <laughs> bread. So, all right, so what we're gonna do when this is done, which I should have been more prepared and had my bag of sugar open, because um, I'm gonna try and open powdered sugar 
without having it go everywhere. <laughs> okay, so, good luck with that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking, oh brother, why didn't I bring some scissors? But I think I'm getting it. I think you are. Yeah. So that's not so bad. Good okay. job. It'll be transporting at home that'll be entertaining without it going all over my car. We can so, find a bread tie maybe. There you go. I bet we could. All right, so what we're going to do is, if this were more professional, we would have match matching bread pans to go into the oven with, but um, we don't. So we're going to take these over to our oven that's preheated, not really, <laughs> and we'll put them in and then we'll, you want to shut that? Yep. Oh, look, ta-da! Oh, it's gorgeous. Our bread is made. Well. It has to bake for like 50 minutes, Debbie. So I knew we wouldn't have 50 minutes right. to wait for it to bake. So we went ahead and, and I made one earlier. So now we are going to make the glaze oh. that goes on top. Oh, so, can this get any better? I know. <laughs> See, and look at how pretty. I really think that it swirl. Is, Isn't that kind of neat? Yeah. So we'll cut into it here in just a minute, but I'm gonna have you grab that. Okay. And then um, we need a half a cup of powdered sugar, which, uh, that's a third a cup, yep. so can you eyeball it or would you like me uh, to eyeball it? I can it? eyeball it. Eyeball it, sister. I can eyeball it. So, and you then. You said a half a cup? Approximately, yeah, a half a cup. If you go a little over, I don't think any of us will cry. Yeah. This is called just doing it on the side. I think that should I do think it. I think that's good. And then what we'll do is you're supposed to add two to three tables, no, wait, teaspoons, I'm sorry, teaspoons. Of milk. Now I just kind of eyeball that as well. Yep. And then you can go ahead, stir. And then you can add more. Like your glaze can be the consistency that you want it. Right. So if you want a real thin, just kind of a, a light glaze, yeah, you can do that. If you want more of a thick, kind of like an icing, then you can do that as well. So it's just kind of whatever you want. Do you think you need some yeah, more milk? Yeah, need a little bit more, please. Sure. Oh, <laughs> that might be too much. We and might have we a thin have glaze. To, we may have a thin. <laughs> yeah, we can that add some powder. Oh, sure. we could, sure. Yeah. And that's another thing. Thank you, um, Debbie. Is if you got it too thin and you're like, oh, it's too much like liquid, um, add some more powdered sugar. I think we will. Go Just for a it. A little bit. That's a very. This is something that you can't really mess up on. First of all, it's preference, and second of all, you can just add more milk or add more sugar. Yeah. So, it's and, whatever you want. And there's do. never too much icing. Never. <laughs> Ask my family, never. Anyway, I brought Debbie here today. We're gonna ice this and um, we'll cut a piece off and stuff like that, but I brought Debbie here today. Um, Debbie and I have something in common. Um, Debbie and I have both lost spouses. So Debbie, um, I just, I'll start, that's fine. I'll uh, drizzle this. And I would like for you to introduce yourself um, tell us how you came to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and then I'd like to just ask you some questions. Okay. So, go ahead. Well, I'm Debbie Lyons, and I was born and raised over in Kansas, small town Kansas, and so my church life started when I was very young. I started going to, to church at probably six years old because in the small town I lived in, there wasn't a lot of stuff to do back in the 50s and early 60s, so church became my safe haven. And I would go to Sunday school, walk the eight blocks every Sunday, winter, spring, summer, or fall. My sister would go with me and my uh, cousin, and we would go every Sunday. Didn't miss hardly any Sundays in like 18 years, which was really cool. That's awesome. Um, but then, um, as I got a little older, well, in 1969, before I graduated from high school, I had always gone to revivals and stuff at the church, and I always felt the urge to go forward when they called called you to come and accept accept Christ. And I was always scared to do that. I was very shy at that point in my life. So, <laughs> and if so, anybody knows Miss Debbie now, she's not shy. <laughs> I'm not shy. And it was very scary for me. But in 1969, we had a revival. And I remember the gentleman's name, Joe Maroney, was the, the uh, um, evangelist who did it. And I was compelled to go forward and accept Christ at that time. And I was 16 at that time. And... Um, so then as the years go on, you know, I'm still, I still follow Jesus. I, I think I played it being a Christian more than I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. And, uh, but I would still go to church and then I got married and had kids and, you know, you know the scenario. So then let's fast forward about oh, 20, 
no, it'd be 45 years, okay? Actually 40, about five years ago, I was church shopping because my church was flooded in 93 and it never reopened. And you know, when you love a church, you wanna continue going to that church. And so I just kept coming back to Grace. I would go try churches and I would come back here and I love, I love the atmosphere here. It's home to me, it's the people are just amazing. But I feel God here. I feel God here. Um, two years ago, almost two years ago, well, July 11th, this coming July 11th, my, well, let me back up one second. Three years ago, my oldest brother, 11 months older than me, passed away unexpectedly from cancer. I'm sorry. And thank you. And it was a shock to all of us and to my mother losing a child. And so then, um, the next year, and so my brother passed away in July, early July. So then the next year, and my husband had passed every health thing he had. He was 67, he had had all, you know, he did all the Medicare um, updates, medical checks and everything, and he was fine. And he had had both his cataracts removed that summer and everything was going great. We were packing to go to Colorado. And this was July 11th. And uh, he went outside to, I was working on something for work. I was doing a PowerPoint. He went outside to put some rocks in this garden that he had just built for me. And uh, he came in in like less than 10 minutes. And it wasn't even real hot yet because it was early. It was in the morning. And he said, dear, I think, and that's what he called me, dear, I think I overdid it. And I said, well, are you all right? And he goes, yeah, I just need some water. I need to sit down. I said, well, I checked his pulse and everything. And I said, are you sure? And he goes, yeah, just let me sit down by the fan and get me some water. So he sat in his lazy boy and I went in to finish my work. And, uh, and I kept yelling at him, Glenn, are you okay? And he said, yeah, yeah. And he was sitting there and 10 minutes later, I hear this, he always snored like a bear, like a bear. You could hear him, the walls would reverberate. He <laughs> snored so loud. And so I, but then I thought, that's a different kind of a snore. And I ran in there and he was in the middle of whatever episode he was having, whether it was a heart, I may need a Kleenex, a heart attack or uh, an aneurysm, we don't know, but his eyes had already rolled back and he said that fast and he was uh, no response and he was, he was real, I'll never forget that sound as long as I live. And so I did call 911 and everything, tried to get him out of his chair to do CPR, but he was a big man, he's six foot three and 240 pounds. And I could not get him out to do CPR correctly. But I did give him some breaths, and I hope this is what you wanted. I mean, I'm telling you no, what happened. Fine. I gave him some breaths, and the, about 10 minutes later, the ambulance got there, and they worked on him. They were wonderful for about 40 minutes. But, but I knew that I, I was with him when he took his last breath um, and held his hand, and so he knew I was with him, I'm sure. I'm sure that he did. So anyway, that was very devastating and very traumatic for me. Yes. It, it was extremely hard, but I had a lot of family, a lot of people that supported me and stuff. But when you go through grief, and sudden grief is evil. It's just so intense when it's so sudden out of the blue and nothing's been wrong with someone. Any death is intense and horrible. But uh, experiencing a sudden death like that, my brother we knew had cancer. My husband was perfectly fine. Um, and uh, so anyway, so you know, after, after that, you live, in a, you live in an abyss, in a dark hole for many, many, many months. And I know that, but a really good friend of mine saw me one day about, oh, maybe five weeks later, and told me about this program that he was working with. And Don Weston, I'll say his name, he's a great man. We worked through school together. We, he was a principal and I was a, a special ed teacher and so I've known him for years and he saw me somewhere he didn't say a word he came up and gave me a hug and just gave me this pamphlet and said Deb when you need me here I am and so I thought about it for a while and I joined this group I went and it was the hardest thing I ever had to do one step in front of the other because I vaguely remember the first six months it, it's so inundating and so you're just alone. And I can remember thinking, God, where are you? I don't feel you. I would talk every day to God, trying to find, where are you? I, I, I couldn't feel him. 
and and I know now, I realize now that there are sometimes he's always there. Right. He's always there because I would get little God winks is what I call them, so that I know that he knew I was in pain and trying to be big and brave for everyone around because that's what moms do, you know that. Right. And uh, that didn't work real well, but I tried. And uh, But anyway, so I joined Grief Share, and Grief Share is very biblically based. It's an amazing program. Yeah, I did bring a book. It is, it is so, it is amazing. The first class I took was just one day, one evening for loss of a spouse, which this book I have read over and over, even in the past almost two years. It has so much information in there, and it, it actually helps you to understand you are not going crazy, that grief is normal, and it's okay to cry and to be angry, and to eventually, what I love about this, to find joy. Mm. You can eventually find joy. And, and grief share, so I, I went through two sessions and bawled through the first session. Probably they tell me I was just sobbing the first six lessons. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because we see a video, it's a three-pronged um, group, and it's all biblically based, and it's the criteria, the curriculum is all already made, set up. So we get books, we, uh, the books are provided for the participants. The leader has a leader guide. I am a leader now. Good. And uh, um, so it's three prongs. So we have a we introduce. We get to know the people, and we let people talk. And it's a no judgment lane. It is a very confidential place. You can cry. You can Good. scream. You can be mad. You don't have to talk. It, it's oh, it's just amazing. It saved my life. I swear. And so I took two sessions of it. And you can see in my book, Diane, hmm. that you can see different colors. A couple of notes, yeah. Well, different colors of <laughs> yes. ink. So I took it two times, and I wanted to see the difference the second time around in my feelings. Right. And Because of being numb the first right. time around. And so... To see if there was growth or change. Exactly. Yeah. And how I felt during that video and during... So after the video, then we discussed the video. And people are free to discuss. You know, we, we have a roundtable discussion. It, it's... It's just helpful to hear other people that are going through the very same thing that you are, whether they've lost their mom, their dad, their spouse, their brother, sisters, a child. You, you have met, I call them my tribe. We, we have formed a tribe because we are so in tune to each other and we support each other. Well, after my second session, Don asked me if I would like to be a facilitator because he had seen growth in me. And I said, oh yes, I want to pay it forward. So I've done three three sessions now and right now with with everything closed we are doing it online we have a conference thing every Thursday night for whoever wants to come and so um, Mary Noel Owens and I and Linda Midyet we lead it via the internet and we have participants come and so they have a link that they can watch the video at home ahead of time because we can't get everybody on a video chat sure. so we have to do tele or do the telephone, so they can watch the video in their own time, and we talk about it, we review last week's homework, and we see if there's any anything in the workbook, because each week after the video, you uh, there's the video outline note here, but then we have our grief work to do, that's the third prompt. And you do that alone? You do that alone, okay. and so we have five days worth, and I know that's really a messy Thing. But there's five days worth, yeah. and there's thoughts from God, there's messages from God, and it, it, it just goes in depth because you truly believe you're going crazy, and you, and I'm sure you understand that. You just want to hole up in a cell and and not face the world at all, and uh, it, it's an amazing, amazing thing. And so right now, while we're in this shelter in place, I've been really worried about the people we haven't reached or that that are so isolated or they have lack of communication, lack of electronics and stuff to do things. And I know we have a bunch of people that watch the broadcasts on Grace, absolutely. And if we could just reach out to any of them to let them know that we are available, that, that the church is available, that you don't have to be isolated and grieving at the same time because that's a perfect storm waiting to happen. Yes. Depression can happen. Yes. Um, it's just not good, but we are here for anyone who needs us. We're a phone call away. Um, I 
will go to a house and sit on a porch with somebody if I need to. But we don't want people to grieve alone. Right. And especially right now, when we are kind of all isolated anyway, it's just the nature of the, the, the season. But um, if people want to get connected to Grief Share or to Debbie, um, you can email me at Diane, D-Y-A-N-N, at graceontheweb.org, and I will email Debbie and get her your contact information so that she can reach out to you and, and get you the information you need so that wherever you're at, um, whether it's your spouse or a parent or a child, um, don't think your grief is something that you should be done with by now. Or that- There's no time limit on no, grief, none. No. no, or you know, oh, well, I just need to suck it out. Um, you know, there's a reason why these kind of programs were invented. There's reasons why people like Debbie are trained to walk with people through this grief process. So please reach out to me here at, like I said, Diane at graceontheweb.org, and then I will um, give Debbie your information so that you can connect, so that you have somebody to walk through this process with, somebody to let you know you're not crazy. It's okay, and you will get through this. You will survive. It might not feel like it on certain days, but but uh, God's got you. He hasn't left you, like Debbie said. It's just sometimes, um, you know, you just can't shake that feeling. May I add? Sure. Go ahead. Point, I'm going to start cutting us some. Cake, a point so. of joy right. that happened for me, in and I don't remember the date. I wish I did, but every night I would pray to God, and I had a mantra that I that I said, and it was. Breathe on me while I sleep, O oh Lord. Breathe on me while I sleep. And I wanted the peace that passeth all understanding. I mean, that's that's what I prayed for. And a lot of times, when you pray for something you want, you get what you need and not what you want. Uh -huh. Because my plan is not the same as God's plan. We all right. know that, you know? And it's yep. kind of hard when you're grieving to accept that. But one night, I woke up, and I, and I said this mantra so many times that I woke up still saying it in my sleep. And, and I'm gonna get chills because I do, because I'm in the presence of God right now, but I, I, I felt him. I absolutely felt him. Uh, whether it was Glenn getting me up through God or, uh, but I felt God. And all of a sudden, just this intense peace. And I'm like, I could breathe. It was the most amazing God wink I've ever had in my life. I wish I could hug you right now. I know. But we can't. <laughs> Social distancing. <laughs> it, it was just. No, that's beautiful. So amazing. And so right after that, the, I found out that I could smile again and laugh. And so when we meet with our, with our tribe, we tell them, you know, you may not. We don't know when you'll be over the grief because grief has no timetable. And be okay with your grief, you know. You have to face it head on or you'll get stuck. So you gotta face it and and it's okay to step back because trust me, I would go four four feet ahead and then go back seventeen feet. Yeah. You know, and so so there is time, there is a time again for joy. Do I miss my husband every second of every day? Without a doubt. Do I wish he was here, especially right now when I'm all alone with the dog and the cat? Yeah. yeah. But, you know, God has other plans, and I am very grateful to my tribe of grief share, to my church, to my family, to my friends. So I hope that people who are hurting out there will contact us, because we will have another session. We're hoping to be back in person in August. Sure. We have two sessions a year. Start one in August and one in January. Okay. Okay, and it's a 13-week program. Okay. Well, Debbie, thank you very much for sharing. Let's take a bite. Okay. I don't know if y'all can see, but Debbie's oh, piece, I think that looks pretty. Um, I took the heel, which it's not bad, but it's no, not it's as pretty as yours. really shirt. pretty. <laughs> so let's, the, this is what we have to do. We have to take a bite and try it. Okay. So, All and, right. And fake it even if I didn't do a good job. Hey, I helped you, so I'll take half the blame. <laughs> not on this one. This is a little oh. rot. You can't go wrong with cinnamon. Mm -mm. Mm, no. And that was the first bite I took was some bread with mm -hmm. cinnamon and sugar and icing. So it's good. Oh, it's wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you. We're trying nice to talk time. without a mouthful of food. <laughs> Not working very well. Thank you so much. And, and um, I'm hoping that this is the last Cooking with Grace because I hope we're all back together and can hug and 
and yep. laugh with each other and smile face to face with each other. So thank you for joining us with Cooking with Grace. If it is extended, then you'll see me again with someone else making something else. But thank you again and, and have a great, uh, a great afternoon. God bless you.